The Small Business Show, episode 190 for Wednesday, September 26th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. The show BFA Small Business here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. We have two sponsors today. Timing at timingapp.com slash smallbusiness and a new sponsor, square.com slash go slash SBS, all about the new Square payroll app. We'll talk about all that in a minute here. But uh, Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right yeah, on. things good. are good. Crazy. Good. But, yeah, you know, of course. just how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's better to be that way than to be sitting there not having anything to do, right? Uh, yeah, I always <laughs> say, uh, you know, when when I when I tell somebody I'm too busy or not too busy, but I'm busy, I, you know, I always say, well, that's better than the alternative. But n- lately, I've started to follow that up with, it's been so long since I've experienced the alternative, I I, I just have to assume that's true. So yeah, 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 yeah. and I do, so, I do believe it's true. Yeah, that, that it's better. Than yeah, I, I, I definitely have like a, a a part of me the grass is greener type mentality where I'm thinking, God, it'd be so nice just to be sitting on the beach somewhere, <laughs> not getting anything done. But I've done, you know, the uh, that, and yeah. then I sit there for a couple hours. I'm like, okay, well. God, how's that place making money down the down that beach? How, how do they work out? And then I start, you know, uh, doing talking, doing things, and and getting involved in things that I like to do, and not sitting around doing nothing. So I, I did an interview yeah. the uh, I don't know last week for a local small business. Uh, uh, I, I I should know what it's called, but it's a, it's a local small business group that they also podcast okay. and stuff. It was on Facebook, and I'll nice. put a link in the show notes. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was asked, you know, what does retirement look like? And uh, and I shared an idea that came to mind years and years ago, which was uh, I thought, well, wouldn't it be great to have an ice cream truck? Like once I'm retired, you know, I could get an mm-hmm. ice cream truck and I could just go around and, and sell ice cream to people like this is this would be great. You know, you do it. It's just in here. You just do it in the summer. I don't know about sure. out there if people do it, but, right. you know, it's just a few months a year. And, uh, and you know, you get to make kids and, and adults, you know, yeah. <laughs> children people of are, all ages, very yeah, happy, pe- right? People are generally in a good mood when they're getting ice cream. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, they're yeah. happy to see you come and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I might do that. I, and, and it, you know, the problem is the first year <laughs> I do that, that's what I would do. And I would know, okay, well, there's this neighborhood you can go to. Let's get another truck. <laughs> but that's exactly it. it by, by the end of the first year, now I know all the uh. neighborhoods to go to. And it's like, well, if I had four trucks, I could hit all of those every day and or yeah, at the right frequency. Yeah. You know, you figure out your frequencies or whatever. And, and, and that's what would happen is the first summer would be this experimentation of what neighborhoods are good and what frequencies are good. And and maybe even looking at like the the property sale uh, charts and stuff to figure out, all right, which people are moving into these neighborhoods that are going to yeah. have young kids. And I want to develop that neighborhood in three years, you know, like like these neighborhoods are going to grow and in, 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 at different speeds and, and all that. But that's the problem is that's like to most people, that's not retirement. <laughs> well, but I, yeah, that's true. But I think it would be uh, it sounds very interesting to me. Uh, and, and but I, I would say. Uh, there's a, uh, and I, I didn't say it, but somebody did, you know, if, if you want to kill, uh, your enthusiasm about something, a product or whatever, to start a business around it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you probably would never want any ice cream again after you did it for a few years. I mean, I, I can remember, uh, you know, I mean, you, you turned it into a business where you're just constantly thinking about, okay, I got to move this. I got to do that. But, but as a retirement thing, you're like, oh, we sell what we sell and we have a great time. That's true. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Although I, you great. know, I've been very fortunate that I have been basically turned my hobbies into businesses, right? I mean, I, uh-huh. I love computers and technology and I found a way to make money with that. Uh, you know, I love playing music. I've found a way to make money with that. That ha- There have been times when that was my full time, like that was my main gig. Uh, yeah. I can make more money on the computer side and I can sleep at home every night doing the computer right, thing right. as opposed to the music thing. So, so that was a pretty easy decision to make. Although, you know, there are times when it's like, wow, that, it, you know, it's fun being on the road and it's, you know, it's exciting sure. and all that stuff. But, uh, and if I had really focused on that, I, I think th- no question I could have turned that into a very lucrative business. It just took 
a sacrifice of traveling yeah. all the time right. that I at the at the time and perhaps even now was not willing to make. But so I don't know that I would learn to hate the ice cream truck because I haven't learned to hate anything else that's but, good yeah, but, that's but great. you're right enthusiasm I mean if it doesn't it doesn't completely erode for me but it, it I mean it becomes a job right so it yeah you become a job it that's definitely right. you know is reduced yeah yeah so yeah, anyway cool. I, like there's yeah, that it's, it's, yeah that's cool that's yeah. cool so hey uh, let's we're, you know I was I was looking for topics today and I was thinking about what we want to talk about we had such a great show last uh, last week with Bill Reddy on from yeah. PayPal and you know and he's he seems like such a great leader he's just a just a down to earth nice guy that's you know been successful uh, had some great leadership traits and so I just went up in onto the you know businessshow.co uh, website I, I typed in leadership I'm all who else have we talked about leadership and I got you know came up no results. And so I said, wow, we really need to do a show. I know we've talked about leadership and, and, you know, leading and managing and all this kind of stuff, uh, ad nauseum uh, on the show over the, over the years, but we'll, let, let's, we're going to do this show all about leadership and, and, I, and not just leading employees, because I think as a leader, you also, you know, lead your, your partners, your customers, suppliers, all of these people in kind of these satellites that, that, circle around you are impacted by how you lead. And I think it's worth uh, spending the next half hour or so talking about it. I'm, I'm in, uh, but I am going to, now that you've teased that, and that is what we're going to talk yes. about. The first thing I want to do is talk about our sponsor, Timing. We're Brown. at timingapp.com slash small business. You can get this app. It's really an app and it. it's a service in and of itself that, well, here's the deal, Right. You know, as I mean, we just talked about it, right? The next yep. distraction is always right around the corner. And that makes it harder and harder to stay on track with your projects and determine how much you really worked, right? We talked about, you know, combining hobbies and business and, and, and that's a great thing, but sometimes it's really hard to tell how productive you've been. And that's why you need an app to help you stay on top of your time. Because manual time tracking interrupts your workflow and it's easy to lose track of. Timing, the app, is different. Timing automates your time tracking to save you as much time as possible. The first thing it does is that it just automatically tracks how much you spend time on your Mac, right? Broken down by app, but not just by app, by website and by document. But that's a lot of data to sift through on your own. So timing lets you use drag and drop to create rules that automatically categorize your time. And I need to do this too, because my computer right now is telling me that I am 50% productive today. And I know pick that's, it up. I know that's not true. <laughs> like if that is true, exactly. I need to pick it up. But really what I need to do is go in and tweak this thing to know what I define as being productive. And I go. have a, I did some different things on this machine. I updated a, a diff, my other computer to Mojave and um, and in some of the apps, not timing. Timing's fine, but uh, some of the apps aren't working right. So I came up here to do some stuff and this computer is not quite trained as to what I do. So I need to go in and tweak it and all that. This is the key folks. So here's the deal. Download their 14 day free trial today, 14 days trial for free at timingapp.com slash small business. And then you save 10% when you purchase. So Go get timing, stop worrying about time, and focus on doing your best work instead. Our thanks to timing for sponsoring this episode. And now we get awesome. to go and play with productivity and leadership. There you go. Uh, yeah, I love about that app how it does it in the background automatically. Yeah. It's such a big deal. It, yeah, yeah, that's it's, great. That's yeah. just huge. Yeah. So, you know, when I when I was looking around, I'm thinking, okay, you know, what type of leadership creates the most uh, successful small businesses, you know, and there's, there's just tons and tons of, of info out there, uh, you know, when you're searching for articles about leadership and stuff, but I kept coming back to the, you know, the one thing is that we're all unique and different people and we all have different leadership and management styles. And I think the, the number one, you know, piece of advice I would give is, is to be authentic and true to your own nature. Don't try to be something that you're not. And if, if you're worried about 
you know, well, I'm not that type of leader. I'm not the cheerleader. I'm not the whatever outgoing. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Not only can you hire people to do that, the, to come work for you if, if you need those folks, but I think it's more important is that the people that are following you, whether they're your employees or otherwise, it's that authenticity that they see that you are really who you are and, and develop your own style based on your beliefs and what kind of culture you want for your small business. And and it's not necessarily an over the top, super charismatic type of thing that always, you know, wins the day with these small businesses. It's, it, there's, there's a lot to be said for other styles and, and we're going to talk about the, you know, those as well. I, I agree with that. Yeah. You need to be you now. Here's yeah. the, here's the thing that I will offer as counterpoint here. You know, a lot of small businesses start out as solopreneurs, right? Where you, sure. you're doing everything and you're just doing all the work and you can, you know, you can have a moderate level of, sometimes you can have a, an, an immense level of success just doing that. Uh, as, but that to me, that's not leadership showing up and doing the work is, I, I mean, it's one aspect of leadership, but I, I, to me, I don't see that as enough Right. If all yep. you're going to do is show up and do the work, even if you've hired other people to do their work, like that's not enough to lead them. It's enough to show them that you have a standard and you work hard and uh, they should probably work hard. Otherwise, maybe they, yeah, they that, aren't going to work for you. Yeah. Right? And that's a part of leadership. But but, but there's more yeah. to it. You have yeah. to you, you do have to take, a, you know, I always call it zooming out a little bit. And especially because I'm I'm that person. Right. I'm always thinking about. That, you know, what what needs to be done? How do we do it? And if there's some problem that shows up, it's like, OK, how do I solve the problem? But sometimes you got to zoom out a little bit and look and like, is this a problem worth solving? Like, is there a better place for me to spend my time? Can that just go away? Can I do a different thing? Can we as a business focus on these things? And what do we as a business focus on? Right. Like these are good things to do. And to me. It, and and certainly I'm, you know, injecting myself into this, but that's, that's to me, part of the definition of leadership is being able to kind of zoom out and see the big picture and, and being willing to look at the big picture. Yeah. I like your comment, you know, it, it that setting the priorities and do we need to be solving this problem or, you know, that kind of thing. I think that's really important and being able to, to kind of have that dashboard level view of your business. Uh, mm. It's it's really hard to do when you're on your own, but once you start doing other things and, and maybe it's contractors and, and interns, and maybe you're not even ha having employees, but you need to be able to step out and look at, at this, like say, this dashboard view of your business. And are there systemic problems that we need to solve and spend a lot of energy on? Or are these just one ofs that, OK, well, that's going to happen and we're going to move on and let's just monitor and see if it if it continues to happen, then we can address it. But uh, I often see, you know, folks in, in business, whether it's employee or, you know, managers trying to change policy, set policy, put tons of energy over what I consider one ofs, um, you know, so I, I think it's more important, like if you're having customer service issues is to drill down into, you know, your whole policy and the way you're handling customer service versus trying to build and change a policy every day based on how thing, you know, some other problem that that pops up. So setting priorities, really important. I like this. Yeah. Categorizing your problems, right? Systemic versus yep. one offs. Yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. it's smart. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And and the other thing I really think it's important is that to understand there is no one leadership style that's going to work for you always. Totally. Uh, it, it, there will be times when it'll be absolutely the wrong time to be the cheerleader and this and that. And, and you know, sometimes you, you, you do need to be the cheerleader and get everybody going and have a Monday meeting and talk about the week. But other times you just need to be the steady hand that shows up and it leads through crisis. And that that reliability and resilience that your followers and, and I keep using this word followers because it's just not not just employees. It's everything your bank partners, you know, your finance partners, your investors. They need to see this steady hand of, hey, you know, Shannon shows up every day. And yes, he knows these problems are going to happen and we solve them and knock them out. It's not we're running around with our hair on fire, uh, you know, at every crisis. Um, and so you want to adapt and, and know that. Uh, 
people skills are really important and and to be able to make those adjustments uh, along the way and and kind of figure out what role does do I need to play right now, you know, during this, sometimes you just need to be quiet just, just listen uh-huh. and have people and they'll solve their own problems sitting across from your desk and you let them go and let them go. And, you know, I can recall just sitting there listening, listening, like, Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And I barely would say anything. And they become like, man, thanks so much for your help. I was like, well, I really didn't do anything, but yeah. sometimes that's, that's what you need. You just my, need to be quiet. My first lesson, and perhaps there's a, le- a meta lesson in this, uh, but I'll tell the story first. My first lesson in, in that was, The after we had been running the business for about eight years and I was finally taking my first real vacation where we were we we were actually taking the kids and going on a cruise and we were going to be detached from reality for a week, like reachable in a true emergency. But there were no it it wasn't really easy to do cell phones at sea or anything back at this time. So it was like we were going to be away. And that was a good thing. Right. And I knew it was going to be a good thing, not just for me and my family, but also for everyone else at the business. And I remember before I went away, I had a conversation with one of my sales guys and uh, and he was, you know, he was stressed about this because he he you know, he needed uh, in his mind, he needed me to help, you know, him solve these, you know, these these problems. He's like, what am I going to do? Sure. You know, I, I, I can't make these decisions on my own. And I said, hey, man, look, uh Let's walk through this. Okay. I said, first of all, it's just going to be a week, which means by Wednesday, it's no longer a week, right? <laughs> you know, I'm back on Monday. It's really not that big of a deal. You know, Monday, right, right. Monday is your, your, your worst day. And then it just gets better from there. Cause the clock ticks down. I, I said, so don't sweat it, you know, that it's this crazy thing. It, and really it's only a week. I said, but what happens when you come to me with, a scenario, you, you know, and he said, he said, well, you, you know, you asked me to tell, tell you what's going on. I said, right. What's the next thing I do? He said, well, you, uh, you asked me what I think we should do. <laughs> and I said, that's right. And, and, and I said, and then the next thing is I agree with what you've suggested 99 times out of a hundred, you know? And he's like, right. And I said, cool. I said, do you want me to record my half of the conversation for you so that you can have it when uh, when I'm away? (laughs) Yeah. You know, and he's like, right. Yeah. I'm like, most of the time, man, you know how to solve these problems. Um, And it's good to talk it out. I said, let's not lose that. It's helpful for all of us, even even if every time we're just doing the, the same thing, you know, it's helpful to talk this stuff out. Uh, for, for all of us, but yeah. you can do it without me. And that's right. And, and, you know, and, and so th- that's the lesson, the meta lesson, as I'm thinking about this is change it up every now and then give yourself, force yourself to see your business from a different perspective, especially if you started it uh, and, you know, you did everything initially and, and then you just brought in other people to take weight off your shoulders. That's good. But now you need to occasionally, at least, and perhaps, you know, at some point, fundamentally shift your perspective on things and twist things a little so that you're looking at it not as the guy that's got to do all the work or the guy that knows about all the work that needs to be done, but as the person who's looking at this business and saying, okay, if I just inherited this today, what are the three things I would keep and what are the three things I would change? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And and I, I like, you know, I, I always make the comment to, you know, my followers, look, always make a decision. I'll never criticize the fact that you made a decision. Now, I may critique the decision you made and yeah. try to learn from it and everything, but I would never say, oh, you shouldn't have made that decision until you talk to me because that's a, that's a nightmare. You need mm. to, you know, you need to grant autonomy and, and really, uh, you know, you sometimes you really have to push for your followers to be able to make those decisions on their own and achieve things on their own, knowing that you've got their back. You know, you're this this whole thing is you're trying to build trust, you know, that yeah. that they know and and they're safe. OK, if I make this decision, I feel it's in the best interest of the business. I'm not going to get, you know, railed publicly or whatever, uh, you know, get get disciplined yeah. or hammer, whatever it is, they, they know that you're going to go, okay, Hey, give me the background on why you made that decision and, and let's analyze it. So I, I really like that lesson. I think it's and, important. And, and when I was going to say if, but, but I'll say when, and again, speaking 
you know, from personal experience, when you make that mistake, when an employee or, you know, a follower, someone that that looks to you and relies on you does make that decision that you would not have done and your gut reaction is to chastise them for it. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. I've done it. You, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. what the heck were you thinking? Like, this, right, you know, right, right. like, you know, something that, that resulted in perhaps some level of catastrophe or whatever. Like, Oh, I can't believe you did that. What, what, what were you thinking? I always remind myself after the fact, once I, once I have my own perspective on it, go back to them, you know, bring your own meal of crow, sit down yeah. at the table in front of them and say, I'm sorry. I, I acted the way that I did. Uh, I can explain to you why, but the reality is that's not, if I had it to do over again, that's not what I would have done. I'm sorry. You know, you made a a decision. I prioritize that. You know that we like to give you autonomy and I apologize, you know, and you really, I mean, you have to mean it, right? Yeah, sure. But but you got to do that. Otherwise, all that autonomy that you've created, I mean, no matter what you do to apologize, you've still kind of reduced it a little bit. Like you've given yeah. these people a reason to be gun shy and you want to m- mitigate that as best you can in this scenario when, you know, you, you wind up, you know, kind of flying off the handle a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens. I, I just don't I do line. it often. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, one of my uh, lines here in the outline to talk about is openly praise and privately correct. Mm. And when you do that, you'll build trust. They'll respect you. And you kind of build this safe environment, which is what you're trying to do, because you want people to experiment. You want people to try new things. And, uh, it, you know, the, everybody's watching. Everybody's look, you know, how did this handle? You know, things are going to happen. Things are going to go wrong. How was it handled? You know, is somebody yelling and screaming? Is Or are you just, again, calm, you know, steady hand? Okay, well, let's talk about this. So this, how did this happen? Okay, great. What, what decisions were made that led us to that? And then if you want to kind of rip into somebody a bit about, you know, uh, something or, or criticize a bit more, pull them aside and, uh, you know, let them know privately and you will, uh, it'll go a long way towards, you know, building that respect and that, you know, safe environment. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I like this, this, this sort of mantra of yours, building trust, building a safe environment that, that, yep. yeah, that it, it built, you know, it, it, kind of furthers a um a mantra of mine that i i tell employees and people that work for me i i am the worst micromanager i do not want to be that micromanager so you and i are going to work together so that i don't feel like i have to and you know and i'm going to work on my part of it but you're going to work on your part of it and together we're going to trust that you're going to be able to do what you do And, and that's that. And if you need help, you're going to ask me because if you don't ask me for help and you, and I find out that you're in trouble, that's going to make me want to micromanage you more, right? You got to come to me, ask for help. Um, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I I have a couple more comments on this, but let's, uh, let's talk about the square payroll service for a second and then, uh, for a minute or so, and then we'll keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. Our, uh, our next sponsor here is a new sponsor for us. It's square. It's Square Payroll, and it is the Square Payroll mobile app, right? So the cool part about this is they've got this great payroll service, right, that totally helps you manage your small business payroll. And now they've got the Square Payroll app, which brings that critical element of any business's back office to your back pocket. Right. With the payroll app, you can manage one of the most important yet complicated aspects of running your business, no matter where you are. The payroll app, the Square Payroll app, can do everything you can do on a desktop from setting up an account to paying your team. It's fully integrated with Square Payments and Time Cards for W-2 employees and 1099 contractors. Square even takes care of your tax withholdings, your payments and filings at no extra cost. 
flexible and transparent pricing that scales with your business. And I love it when they give us pricing to share, like not only do they give it to us and give us permission to share with you, this is a mandatory thing that they have asked us to tell you. And I love the fact that they are being this transparent. It's just 29 bucks a month plus $5 per employee for month per month. Right. Which is great deal. It's, man. it's a good deal. Yeah, it really is. So, uh, you can search for Square Payroll in the you know Apple App Store or the Google Play App Store to download the app, or you can visit square.com slash go slash SBS. Again, that's square.com slash go slash SBS to learn more. And our sincere thanks to Square and the Square Payroll app for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, and we'll post that that link up in the small business support group. If you haven't been over there yet, uh, just go to businessshow.co slash Facebook and come on over and join the conversation. You know, there's lots of good comments after the show and, uh, you know, ask questions. There's a, there's a three, 400 small business owners that hang out in there. It's great. Yeah, it's a good place to be. Absolutely. That's cool. So to jump back on this, you know, talking about the safe, trusting environment, all this kind of stuff, the, I think what it is... Uh, is there's two different ways to handle it. That there's focusing your leadership and you know, like your management on tasks as the priority or relationships as the priority. And and I have always tried to, uh, and, and, I, and I can't say I planned it. I'm just this type of person, but I always focus on the relationship part of it. And I have found that if you focus on, uh, you know, on the person and figuring out what you need to do to help them and to become a better follower, employee, whatever it is, they're going to get the tasks done that you need to get done. Um, you know, that they'll respect you, they'll trust you, they'll, they'll want to do it out of loyalty, out of that respect and trust, not out of fear that something bad is going to happen if they don't get these tasks done. Mm. Um, and, you know, I often said, I mean, I've had, had just some great people working for me over the years in various businesses. And one of the comments I, I often make when I'm describing, you know, one of these people is like, look, these, these people care about the business or, or not, I mean, not care, but these people worry, worry about the business more than I do. You know, I have this create my own reality, optimism. I just power through everything. Right. And, but, uh, it's, I, I'm benefiting dramatically from having a team of people, uh, you know, working alongside me that are picking, you know, handling the small things that I am definitely brushing over and they're solving these kind of problems. And I believe it's because I have a good relationship with them and I've developed it over time and they feel like, uh, we are working side by side. You know, I've had them tell me that before. It's like, well, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm just working for you. You know, we're trying to build this business together, which is great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So when when uh, I'm going to I'm going to dig in a little bit there when you say that you focus on the people, the relationships, but really it's it's developing your people. Uh, yep. What what are what are a couple of specific things that that you uh, can do or you can guide others to do to to develop I employees and, and sure. in that way? Yeah, I think one of the first things is is right person right task or right job, you know, is, is the, uh, you, you, you'll see, you get a new person in, they start in a position and you can kind of find it. Wow. They, you know, is this what they're good at or are they better at other logistical things or that? And, and, you know, we constantly would make adjustments and not be set in like, okay, look, you were hired as a technician and that's it. You have to fill this role. But it, I think you really need to be flexible to take advantage of someone's inherent skills that they bring to the table or bring to the job. Um, and then the other thing is, is to actually be interested in them. You know, uh, we, uh, you know, we used to do these Friday lunches at tech restore and you get a chance to actually talk and meet and what's going on and, and, you know, their family and this kind of thing where you have to be genuine about yeah, it. You, know, yeah, yeah. Get, you can't, it's not, you can't just make it up, but you have to talk and joke around and, and, uh, you know, be human about it. And then you can, uh, you know, use those tidbits of information that, you know, you know, about like, I would learn, Oh, somebody has a young kid that's still in school. I, I know that one of their priorities is to be available and not miss things that young elementary kids have at school, whether of it's course. a play, play a music recital, that kind of stuff. So I would go and say, Hey, you know, if you need to take off and you got something coming up, please, talk to me. Cause that's really important that you go out and be able to do that. Mm. And, 
and you, again, you can just say, oh, that's that's great. You know, and uh, it, you have to little things like that, you know, help build trust, getting to know that person. And, you know, you got to try to create an environment that you actually enjoy working with these people. If you don't like them. I mean, that kind of sucks, you know, <laughs> it's going to, ha- it, it's going to happen. I mean, there's no doubt you're going to have people who are like, well, that, they're not my favorite, but you know, they do whatever. Um, but if you get enough people that you can connect with in your company or follow, whatever it is, yeah. what happens is they begin to sing your praises and to uh, reinforce that trust and that safety and, and the respect that you're trying to build with new employees. Cause I can hear it. You know, you hear him talking about it. Oh, yeah. you can go ahead. Just go ask, you know, Shannon, he'll, he'll let you do that. You got to go, go, you have to do this or whatever. Yeah. He, he, they wind up kind of defending you as like, Hey, he's not like the normal boss. Just right. go ahead. You Just can get ask. this problem solved. Yeah, go yeah, ask. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You need a new piece of equipment that's expensive. You know, like I would tell people, I'd just walk up. Hey, how's it going? I mean, is there anything that you need at your, you know, we had a ton of technicians and I would always ask, do you need anything at your workstation? And I can remember, you know, a, a, a guy that was relatively new and he was asking me, he's like, well, gosh, you know, I know we only have three of these uh, heat stations, but you know, if everybody had one of those, it, it would make things much, much faster. Hmm. And, you know, I was like, wow, okay, well, they're expensive. You know, they're like 500 bucks a piece. And I said, okay, well, let me, let me figure this out. And so slowly over like the next six months, we, we started picking them up when we could get deals. And, you know, by the end of that year, everybody had one at their workstation and he was right. And this was some, you know, really young guy that it wasn't that he had a ton of experience in productivity or logistics or whatever. He could just see it. He's like, I'm waiting in line behind this guy to use this piece of equipment. Oh, and oh, you know, yeah. and yeah. I'm not seeing it cause I'm not in the lab. I'm in oh. my office or I'm out and about. Well, not and a, not, to you, you know. things are going as fast as they always have. So there's no Correct. problem, right? Like yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. And, and that is the benefit of bringing in new people or sure. to your point, you know, adjusting someone and putting them in a different job or whatever. Um, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, and what, my, my dad worked for for a while for a company called the Danbury Mint, which uh, was the uh, second largest uh, company in the market of people that build these things like the dust collectors. Really, the Franklin sure. Mint is the most <laughs> popular one. Right. And then, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the Danbury Mint is a very distant second, but they are number two. I mean, they you know, they they hold that. And I remember when he started working there, he said, it's amazing. No one is ever let go here. Like it's part no. of their culture. They hire slowly. They make sure that the people are good people. He said, yeah. but it is routine that they move people around uh, to, you know, to, to make sure that they stay productive. If somebody, even if somebody did a good job in one role for a while and they get a little stagnant, they'll just move them. And uh, and it's just part of the culture and, and no one takes it personally. And, you know, everybody appreciates the, the loyalty that goes in both yep. directions and all of that stuff. Deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. But but it, you have to make it part of the culture so that somebody doesn't see like, yeah. oh, my gosh, I failed at this. So now I'm being forced to do that. But, it, but you know, to your point just there, right? You now you have somebody that's new in a job, whether they're new to the company or not, is almost irrelevant, right? It's just, okay, yes. you know, that I'm doing this job and I see this inefficiency and, and you asked, had you not asked, do you need anything? We wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I, you know, I know after that, I made it a point, you know, to the, to the service manager, I'm like, look, let's tell everybody they've got a budget to get you know, missing tools or different things. And, you know, you just, Hey, you've got a hundred bucks if you need to use it in a month to go buy whatever and order, whatever, you know, whatever you need. And, and that kind of stuff, what happens is people don't talk about it and they assume that, Oh, they don't want to spend the money. They don't want to do this. So you, you encourage everyone to speak up um, and, and, it, and it works out really well. And that's part of the relationship thing yeah. because they, it, they feel on, and it's, it's true that you're like, Hey, what do you think? You know, I don't know. How, I don't know how to do your job. I don't know your job anymore. I right. used to. Yeah, but I used to. Yeah. I used, but I don't know anything about it. So, what do you need to do your job better? And and to really listen to them when they say, "Oh, I need a five hundred dollar piece of equipment for a, a guy that's you know just got hired." Like, okay, that's great, and it, it builds trust over time. And those people, you know, they work for me forever. You know, and yeah. and uh, so I, I, we're we're 
we're kind of getting in, you know, in, towards the end here, but there, I have a few really, uh, a couple more important things I want to talk about. One is ethics and the other is persistence. Mm. And ethics is really important and you're going to get challenged ethically on the decisions that you make and that your employees make a lot. And we probably need to do a whole show on, on small business ethics, but in this context, everyone is watching you, your followers, and they want to see the decisions that you make, the, the ethical decisions you make towards your customers, your partners. Uh, you know, if you get an extra shipment worth of stuff that didn't get billed to you and your shipping department knows about it, they're interested to see how you are going to handle it. Yeah. And, I, and I, would, I would suggest that it, you need to think very carefully because it sets a tone. And if you're making decisions that cut corners and are ethically sometimes maybe on the edge, and, and I'm not preaching here, I've been in this decision and I've, I have made the wrong decision about things like sure. this before that's come back to you know, bite me in the, in the rear. Uh, so take a moment and think about the broader repercussions of the uh, ethical decisions that you make about about all the all parts of your business because they're not uh, they're not isolated. It impacts your your leadership and uh, and you know people that are following you. Yeah, you know it, it, I'm I'm always building our show notes while we're we're doing the show as I'm keeping the timestamps. In fact, for those of you that don't know, if you visit businessshow.co or you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. We do timestamps for every episode and you can just click on the timestamp to get right to the chapter where we're talking about whatever it is we're talking about. Or if your podcast app supports chapters, we're there. Just go look and, and you'll see them. Um, but I almost named that chapter manage your ethics. And then as we were talking, I changed it. Monitor your ethics because <laughs> that, that which is monitored is managed. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 I, like yeah. That. I like it. That's yeah. great. And then, you know, persistence. Same thing. Uh, everyone is looking how, how are you going to handle things? You know, your followers are looking uh, for you uh, to keep powering through when in, during adverse times. They want to feel that steady hand, your calm demeanor during crisis. If you need to go outside and scream or sit in your car and bang your head, you know, or or, you know, spill your guts to your spouse. That's one thing. I wouldn't do it in front of your, your followers, your employees, your partners, whoever they are, um, set the example and, and, you know, be the bridge that gets you from, to the other side, mm -hmm. uh, when, when crisis and things happen. And the other thing, and I've, I've mentioned this on the show a couple of times when, when crisis and bad things happen and y you, you may want to go in your office and shut your door and sit down and just lay your head on your desk. That's absolutely the worst time to do it is during crisis situations or conflicts or whatever, your followers, your employees, all these people, they need to see you operating in a, in a steady manner. Your door needs to be open and welcoming in case they need to come in and talk, keep your door open, uh, and, you know, when things are going good, you can just close your door and get a little private time, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. But no, you know, I, I would suggest that when things are not going good or you have a meeting, like the, I think the worst thing to do is to have a, a, a meeting that's not good and maybe you have to break some bad news or you're letting people go and that stuff's going to happen. And then to go into an office and close the door, either you alone or you with another manager, because everybody knows what's going on. You're talking about what just happened. You need to be talking about it with them. They need to be able to come in. So leave your, leave your door open. Uh, yeah. During that, thing. yeah. Communicate so, during crisis, right? Yeah, yeah. That's really good. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. I'm a firm believer in, you're, you know, you, you can be successful as you want, but emptying the trash for your employees and making them lunch pays back in dividends that you will, you know, exponentially because they look at you and like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm just doing the trash real quick before I go home for the weekend or you don't have to do it every, every week, but they need to see you doing that stuff. And one of the best things we ever did was, you know, we cook for people and, you know, barbecue. What do you want? How can I make that for you? And, you know, buy them lunch. It's a minimal investment, but even better, make them lunch or uh, make them break, uh, make them breakfast, whatever you're comfortable with doing. People love food and they love to have their boss doing something for them. It's really a great way to flip it up and 
I'll leave you with that. I Hopefully like that's helpful. Yeah, Hopefully. be the janitor and the cook. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, yep, that's there, there's your leadership lesson from uh, the small business show. <laughs> that's it, right? In a nutshell, be the janitor yeah. and the cook. Humility. The yeah. the re- yeah, humi- right, right. But, humility. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it pays off great. And uh, you know, we'd love to hear your tips. What what's worked for you? What did we get wrong here? Uh, feedback at businessshow.co. You know, communicate with us, talk with us, come on the show and talk about your experiences. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, and thank absolutely. you for absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much, everybody. Yep. And make sure to check out our sponsors, square.com slash go slash SBS, timingapp.com slash small business. Just remember, keep living that charmed life, folks. We'll see you next time.